Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ooh. Happy Wednesday, right? The middle of the week, and Lord help us get through it. He's helping us every day. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are lord you are good and your mercy endure it forever Lord you are good and your mercy endure it forever Lord you are good and your mercy endure it forever Lord you are good and your mercy endure it forever People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship. Jewish people are in atonement. They take a little bitter with the sweet. And that, isn't that life? That's, you know, sometimes we're going through good and sometimes we're going through bad. But you know what? He's always good. He's always good. 
He's always good. He's already went before us and taken care of each one of our problems, everything that we're going through. He's seen that, seen fit, hallelujah, to put us on a path to find him, to seek him in everything we say and do. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for today, Lord Jesus. We thank you for being a good God. We thank you for being a mighty God. We thank you for being a powerful, almighty God. We thank you for being the King of kings, hallelujah, and the Lord of lords. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray that you have your way in this place, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you touch the messenger today, Lord Jesus. The the messenger that is going to bring us good word, Lord Jesus, sound word, Lord Jesus, edifying word, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Strengthen them. Take all the nervousness away, Lord Jesus. And we thank you. We praise your name. Bless everyone on their way coming, Lord Jesus. Give them travel and mercies and grace, Lord. And we thank you. We give you our glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Good? Great? Wonderful? Amen, because God is good, amen? And he's good? Oh, man, Tommy comes, Tommy the Clown at church tonight, amen. <laughs> amen, amen. So, Always good to be before God's people, amen, because I know I am not worthy, amen. We talking about closing our mouth, amen, amen. We going to come from the perspective of we run our mouth too much to God. We run our mouth too much to God, and that gets us in a whole lot of trouble, amen, amen. So we got to watch what we say even to our Lord God, amen. Amen. Let's start. Let's go to James to get our bearings. It's our scripture for the month. Amen. James chapter 1. In verse 19, amen? amen? Everybody reading. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. We need to be swift to hear and slow to speak. Amen. It's funny, before I go into it, y'all can turn to uh, Ecclesiastes. But it's funny, uh, when was that? Monday night. Got a quick quiz. Amen. Monday night. I'm driving around looking for parking. Amen. Everybody that know and uh, stay with me, come over there to visit, they know how hectic that can be. Amen. So I'm a <laughs> Nina say she don't miss it. Amen. But driving around for a long time, and I, you know, usually I've been finding parking pretty fast. But Monday I didn't. So I'm driving around, people, I pull on the street, they just pulled in a parking spot. So I pulled on my street, Mayor Post across 6th Street, I see somebody leaving. So I'm backing up. I got my reverse lights on. And as soon as the person pull out, you know, they pulling out, I came back up because they pulling out. Somebody just turned the corner and pulled into the spot. Boy, boy, I sat there, I pulled, <laughs> I turned around, pulled over inside, like, yeah, I'm looking at you because you stole my parking spot. Well, you can't hear me. I got, you know, my window's about like this. But I go around, I'm turning, I'm hot. I'm hot. But it's a quick quiz now. I'm hot. So everything in me wants to pull over and say something. So I come around. 
I, I turn around, go down my street, hit the corner, and come, and come around. I see them walking. They looking at me, and the dude is smiling at me. <laughs> so now I started sweating. I'm sweating because I want to say something so bad. And I'm sitting there like this. And I'm looking back at him. But like I said, I may not say nothing, but I'm thinking a whole lot of stuff. But I wanted to say something so bad. And then the first thing that came to my mind, I, I said it to my wife, I got to practice what I preach. Got to practice what I preach. Because it don't matter. That was a quick test for me. And it, it was right after Sunday. Hey Amen. If, if God would have did it Sunday night, I wouldn't have said nothing to nobody because I didn't feel like talking. I was too tired. But he did it the next day. And I was, I, was, I was sitting there. I thought it was funny. I was thinking about it today and, and yesterday. I said, we'd be so anxious to say something and correct somebody till it affect us. And I'm sitting there like, I'm, I'm sweating because I'm fighting to say something. I'm sweating, and I'm walking down the street. I stopped talking about it, but I was mad the rest of the night. I said, Lord, that ain't right, because I, I, I really wanted to get out the car and scare them. Say, and then teach them, like, if you're going to come over here and park, you're going to learn the rules of how we do things in park over here. But what does that matter? It don't. They still in that parking spot, and I'm still driving around looking for parking. So it don't even matter. So God said, why are you sweating for it? don't matter. Because didn't you tell me you're going to shut your mouth? Didn't you tell me you're going to shut your mouth? Amen. So I had to suck it up, but we got to practice what we preach. We got to practice what we hear. And we got to put in practice what we didn't utter out our mouth to God. Amen. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. But God is good, and he's good all the time. Amen. But I thank God for the tests and trials and the mercy. Amen. Because it, real, it makes you realize when he puts you in the... Without tests and trials, you're not going to grow. Just, just, you might as well get over it. Without tests and trials, you ain't going to understand what the words say that you can really put this stuff in action. But you got to want to do it. Amen. But see, the funny thing about putting this stuff in action... We tell God we're going to put it into action. When we hear the word, we get all emotional and get all excited. Then we come up for prayer. Then we go back to our seat. Lord, I got to do better. Lord, I'm going to do better. But you don't realize you just made a vow to God. Lord, I'm going to do everything you told me to do today. I'm going to shut my mouth up. I'm going to do what you tell me. I'm going to be quick to hear. But you don't know you just made a vow before God. Amen. Verse 1. Chapter 5 of Ecclesiastes. Hold on. Let everybody get there. I want everybody reading, paying attention, not falling asleep. Where Derek at? Here. Yeah. <laughs> That's my boy. Derek is my boy. Amen. Verse 1 of chapter 5. Keep when thy goest to the house of God. And be more what? Swift to hear. Than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do. He said, when you come through those doors, watch what you say to me. He said, keep your foot. When you come through those doors, don't be quick to utter nothing. Why? Because I'm God. I want you to come through those doors and hear what I have to say to you. Remember, Hearing means to learn. I want you, and hearing means to be instructed. So I want you to come in here and get instructed how to shut your mouth. I want you to come in here and learn how to shut your mouth. That's why he said, when you come before my face, he said, I want you to be swift to hear. But we come before God's face and be ready to run our mouth. Instead of just coming here and say, Lord, what you got to say to me today? And when you say it, Lord, let it be hidden in my heart. 
But we come in here and say, Lord, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to do everything you told me to do. Lord, just save me, and I thank you for it. And, and Lord, thank you for teaching me, but I'm going to do everything you told me to do. But you uttered it, and God going to hold you to it. But we don't realize it because we're so used to saying a whole bunch of idle words. We used to just running it and blabbing off the mouth. And don't do what we said we're going to do in the first place. We got to stop. See, one thing about this whole month, it's going to teach us how to stop saying empty promises or giving empty promises. And only we make a whole lot of promises. We think we're making them to man, pastor, whatever, but you make them things to God. And God said, I'm a, that's why he said, when you come in here, be swift to hear. Be swift to hear that you need to shut your mouth. Be swift to hear who and learn who you talking to before you open up your mouth and talk. When we have, when you have, when you go into business meetings or you go in there with the boss, who talking? The boss. We don't go in no meetings to run our mouth. We go in our meetings, meetings to get instructed. When we go into meetings with pastor, what? We go to get instructed. Then when he asks you to say something, say it. But God's saying, you better watch what you say to me when you come to say it. Why do you think pastors say what he say? Far as, I don't like no, no dumb ideas. He make you feel stupid when you say stupid stuff. What he is is weeding out carnal stuff. I'm weeding out the junk so you won't put yourself in a position of sin in front of me. Ooh, hallelujah. God is putting us in a position not to sin in front of him. Because he's saying, don't, don't, you consider that you do, you're not considering that you're doing evil. Because you really don't know who you're talking to. Back in the, the days when they had kings and stuff like that, people couldn't just come in order and had an audience with the king and just blabber out the mouth what they feel. They would kill him. And we think we coming to the person, and we coming in front of the person who created everything, a king, a god, the god, and we don't sit in and have the, 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 the reverence to even reverence him to shut our mouth and just listen. We don't even think about what we're saying to the almighty God. We don't even realize, I'm going to hold you to that. Ooh, hallelujah. Verse 2. Be not rash, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth, Therefore, let thy words be few. Let them be few. Shut your mouth. Don't be quick to say anything. Rash. Rash means to be anxious, to thrust out, hasty, babble. Babble means foolish or meaningless chatter, to reveal foolishly or thoughtlessly. So anytime you babble out the mouth in front of God, you ain't really thought about what you said. Because we, one thing about it, you got to make sure you keep your emotions in check when you come to church. It's one thing to praise God and worship him. And it's another thing to come before him because you've been worshiping him and you feel good to start uttering and blabbing out the mouth. That's a whole totally different thing. Because when you worship and you praising God, you thanking him. And a lot of times when you worship, you really don't say much. Sometimes you sit there and just rock and just mm, think about the goodness of God. Sometimes you just sit there and feast off what's been said and you close your mouth. Because what happens when you hear something that really rocks your boat, you at all when God talks. You at all. Because first of all, Lord, you really know me. Lord, you really care for me. Thank you. And you can't really say nothing, you at all. Because what makes you at all, because when God says something, he comes to help you out in your lane, your world, your small little world. And you just saying, man, God, you thought about me. So you're not quick to really utter nothing. But when we get all hyped up and get all emotional, because we know we feel bad, he then corrected us, convicted us. Then we come up, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm going to do better. Oh, that's a vow. That's a vow. 
just because you really didn't mean it or you forgot what you said doesn't mean he ain't going to hold you accountable. Let's go to Where's that scripture at? James 1. Back to James 1. We're going to start at verse 22. Well, we can start at verse 19 and then read down. Amen? Amen. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity and naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Verse 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your, your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man that beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. For whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. We're going to talk a little about the doing part. But I really came over here about when you, this is the, this is the mirror. This is the glass. The pulpit, the preaching is the glass. So it is designed to make you see yourself. So while you sitting here and the mirror is showing you yourself, you get emotional because you finally see yourself for yourself. So when we see ourselves for ourselves, the first thing we want to do at that moment, Lord, I'm sorry if you're wise. Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me, because you just showed me something that I really don't want to see or I ignore because I don't want to see myself. But see, what we tend to do while we're looking in the mirror is run our mouth. So what we do, we come up here or we sit in there and utter stuff to God and don't know it's a vow. Because we see ourselves. So since we see ourselves, we start uttering. Because first of one thing, we scared. Lord, you, you can kill me. Lord, I ain't going to do that no more. How many of us said, and said that and we still continue that same sin to this day? I ain't going to do that sin no more. But how many times you keep slipping back into that same sin? I ain't going to talk. I'm going to be nice to everybody. Oh, Lord, please don't say that. Because the one person that make you mad enough, you ain't nice no more. But they included in that everybody. So the glass then showed you yourself. But then when you leave, then when you leave the presence of God, the sanctuary of God around from the saints, amen, he said, for he beholding himself goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is or was. The reason why he said forget it, the manner of man he was because it's past tense to him because he didn't walk out from the presence of the mirror and he didn't forgot what he looked like. Not only he forgot what he looked like, you forgot what you didn't say to God. So how many things you didn't utter to God that you haven't done to this very moment? How many things you have uttered to your king, your God, your creator, your savior that you still haven't done to this day? Or are you slow about doing it to this day? Let's go back to Ecclesiastes. Where's Sarah at? It's some water. Let's read verse 2 again. Be not rash with thy mouth, thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Don't let how you feel. Don't let because the mirror then got to you 
Don't let it make you uh, get in bad standing with God. Amen. But this is not to say not to worship God, not to say nothing to God. But just be, just think about it. And if you say it, do it. Because he said, if you're going if you gonna to be a hearer, also be a doer of the work. If you're going to say it, do it. Because God expects it out of you. Amen. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Just sit there and just enjoy what, what God is teaching you. Enjoy what God is uh, helping you to learn. Don't sit there and be quick to hear something and jump to start speaking. Why are we so quick to jump to start speaking instead of just sitting there listening? Take it in. Let it soak in your spirit. Let it simmer a little bit. Let it get down in your heart. We don't allow the word to get deep down in us. Why? Because some of us is stony ground. Some of us is thistle. And it comes back when the wind blows, it comes back and snatch away the word. Let the word get deep down in you. When it gets deep down in you, you'll learn who God is, you'll reverence him better, and you won't be so quick to say anything in front of his presence. And then you got the Holy Ghost. God is everywhere. So you uttering it doesn't mean God haven't heard it. Didn't we read that he's going to judge us? Did I go over there to Matthew? Matthew 12. Matthew 12. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Matthew 12. Thank you. 35. Amen. First, I said 30, Matthew 12, 35. A good man out of a good treasure of the heart bringing forth good things. And an evil man out of evil treasure bringing forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle, idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Everything you say, the reason why you're going to give an account because you uttered them before God. You uttered them before God. So he said, I'm going to judge you for all that emptiness. Idle means nothing, worthless. One thing that, that struck me kind of funny about the word idle, it means lazy. Lazy. Are you lack? Useless, barren, lazy. Free from labor or shunning the labor which one ought to perform. You shun the labor. In other words, you have no works behind what you didn't said you was going to do. And we just said, works, works, you got, you got your works, you didn't heard it, but you ain't doing it, it's dead. You can't do nothing without doing what you're supposed to do. But you didn't said it, so what you going to do about it? Why sit there idle? Why sit there and be lazy about what you proclaimed you was going to do for God? How many of us did stop calling people, but we didn't utter that to God? We going to call the people. When we got them crosses and the names on the back, we didn't utter that, rash, and said, we going to call these people and stay on them, but we don't. Uh, we uttered that in front of God and said, we going to do it. How many of us keeping that up? We was rash. But God said, I still going to hold you accountable for that. Because you uttered that before me, because we sat here and prayed over them things. Everybody prayed. They said they prayed and got their name, pulled their cross, but then we didn't call them. Or we may have called them one time and think that's sufficient for God. We got to do everything God tell us to do. But if you idle, you, you shunning. You shunning the work it takes to get the job done. Why would we shun on something we said we would do? Why would we shun something we came before God and say, 
Lord, I'm going to do everything you told, tell me to do. And we shun because we lazy and don't think about what we say before God. We can perform all the duties God tell us, right? Why? Because we got Christ. And he's in us, right? If he's in you, you can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens you. So, Lord, everything I done said, Lord, give me the strength to perform it. But you got to be willing to work. Y'all kids, stop talking. Listen, it ain't nothing else to talk about. My kids, we got to do the work. We got the strength to do the work. Because we got Jesus on the inside of us. But we can't just sit there and just utter something. And then we sit on what we uttered? That don't make much sense, do it? Especially not to God, not to God, because God got the strength. He got the power to give you the strength to do it and perform it. So if he given us the power who got all power, why are we not doing what we did, what we proclaim we going to do for God? We we'll say we'll be on time for here on out. Don't be on time. We said we us brothers said we going to do this for the church and and, 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 and make sure the, the stuff is right in the church and we don't do it. Because we got a bunch of idle words to God. We talking to the king. We got to stop putting idle words in the king's ear. Just because we didn't mean it doesn't mean God ain't going to hold you accountable. Ooh, hallelujah. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes. Let's read verse 2 again. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou art upon the earth. Therefore let thy words be few. Verse 3. For a dream coming through the multitude of business, and a fool voice is known by the what? Multitude of words. We read a lot about how foolish it is to run your mouth on Sunday. And God said, through a multitude of dreams, when you, when you got a lot of stuff on your mind, you worry, you got business and stuff, you're going to have dreams. It's going it's to be in your dreams. But then a multitude of words, you done showed that you're a fool. Like, I like how he said it in Matthew. He said, they get up there and they said, through vain repetitions, you think God going to hear you because you got a lot of swelling words? Because you keep saying stuff over and over and over and over. That don't mean nothing to God. Especially if you ain't doing it. We got to perform this stuff. We can perform this stuff. We can turn this world upside down. We'll sit there and say it. We have one of them hoorah messages and we get all puffed up. Yeah, we going to go out there and turn the world upside down. What are we doing with that? Personally. We'll do it when the, when, when the church called, well, some of us, we'll do it when the church called a pack, a, 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 a group witnessing. But do you do it when you're on your job? Lord, I'm going to represent you every chance I get. That's a vow. And we all didn't said it. How you doing with that? Was it just an idle word or did you really mean it? We can perform this stuff. We can turn this world upside down. We can make this church great, the greatest church ever. It's already the greatest church ever. But are you going to be great in it for God? I don't want to be just a mediocre saint. If you be a mediocre saint, you're going to bust hell wide open. Because everything about God is excellent. Everything about God is on point. Everything on God is precise and pristine. And he only gets better and better and better. So when our idle words ain't going to match up to that. Why? When you're idle, you're lazy. We got to stop being lazy when it comes to God's business. We have stuff coming up and we don't even act like we care it's coming up. How many, know, how many people know is a Visitor Appreciation Sunday that's coming up? Few. Well, you should know, Nina. You did the flyer. 
But we have things coming up. But we say we'll be at the church service. We'll take care of the church. How many are you going to be here Saturday to make sure the church is right for Sunday? Because we're going to have visitors come. But we avow, we have a whole lot of idle words. All of us, me included. But we got to get down and say, Lord, please remind me of all my vows, Lord. Please remind me what I have said in your ears that I haven't done or I'm slow about knowing. Because I want to perform all my duties for you. Because I don't want to come up for judgment and then God pull out the books and say, well, James, you said you did this. You said you was going to do this. You said you was going to do this and you ain't did it. Why you think Pastor had us? You give me a letter of what job you want to do. We give him a letter saying we, we, we put a whole lot of good things on that letter. I'm going to do this for the department or whatever ever else. And then how do we, do, how, what's your grading system on what you did? Grade yourself. You think God is pleased with your, with your work on how you did for your department? All of us. All of us, me included. Because I'm telling you, like I said, this is my month. Y'all just sitting here listening and being a part of my month. So God been slapping me all upside my head. Because, James, you, gotta, you done ran your mouth a whole lot to me. Boy, especially when, he, especially when God start tapping and touching your health, you start running your mouth real good to him. When you know you ain't did something right and you know he should kill you, you feel like you dying, then you get to, Lord, forgive me. You just heal me. I do this, that, and the third. That's a vow. That's a vow. So God said, he didn't, oh, really? If you just say me, I'll do that. That's a vow. Lord, please forgive me, and I'll I change my That's a vow. We didn't, or, we didn't utter this stuff. Are you going to let it just be idle words out of coming out your mouth, or are you going to do something about it? We got to do something about it. Everything we didn't utter, we got to perform the things, the duties that we said we will do. As brother said, we'll keep this church clean. We need to keep it clean. We said we'll be here for Saturday prayers. We don't come. Some of the sisters be waiting out there because they had a sisterhood meeting because we don't show up. But we said we will. We made so many vows and don't realize we done made the vows we done made. And God said, I'm going to seek payment for it. Ooh, hallelujah. Verse 4. Let's read. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasures in fools. Pay that. Defer. Defer not to pay it. You know what defer means? Being slow about paying it. That's being slow. That don't mean to say that you're not doing it. That means you procrastinating at doing it. That means you tarrying at doing it. If you're going to vow a vow, complete it and pay it. Don't be slow about doing it. We all then vow to pay what? $1,200, right? For pastors and first lady anniversary, right? For the church, right? Aren't they a blessing to us? And then Mama Brina came up with a nice payment plan. And we all said, we'll do that. We vowed that vow before God. How are we doing with the payment plan? But we say we love pastor. We love our church. We love our first lady. We love all this other stuff. We all, we all, we all slacking. But he said, defer not to pay it. If you slow about paying it, I got a problem with that. If you slow about treating everybody right, I got a problem with that. If you slow, I get around to it. When you said, I'm going I'm to start getting up and praying my prayer hour, whatever prayer hour you said and proclaim to God, I get up at 4 in the morning. Okay, you didn't miss the week. 
God said, you being slow, I got a problem with that. You vowed that vow to me. I got a problem with that. We got to pay our vows that we didn't pay to God because God is looking for it. He's looking for his payments. Amen? Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 23. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We're going to start at verse... We're going to start at verse 21. Got to be slow to speak, even before God. Amen? Verse 21. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not what? Don't be slow about paying your vows. If you're going to do it, be on point with that thing. If you're going to do it, be on point with it. Because God said, don't vow no vow to me. I'm the king. I can kill you at any moment. God can kill us. He owe us. He owe us. Because the wages of what? Yeah. Is what? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Boy, we got some, we trumping up. We are trumping up some wages. Because we don't realize what we say. That's why your life, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Your tongue can either heal or wound. And a lot of us choose to use our tongue to wound people and even wound ourselves. We wound ourselves because we proclaim stuff before God and we slack or we slow about doing it. Then pastor got to come up here, pull us brothers in the back, and tell us to do what we ought to and know and said we was going to do. Why? Because our words are idle. We lazy, even in our speech. Let's do what God tell us to do. Not only that, do what, let's do what we said we was going to do. From the top, 21. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, Thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God, what? God will surely require it of thee, and it will be sin in thee. He said, I'm surely going to require it. James, you told me you was going to stop getting angry with everybody. I'm requiring that out of you. Was that just idle words? Were you just running your mouth because you were scared? You let your heart make your mouth run and you didn't regard that you were sinning because you, re you said it to the king. Now the king won't pay me. Pay, 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 pay. You don't know when God going to come and shake your tree in the middle of the night. You don't know when God going to come and knock on your door, tap on your shoulder, and say, I'm looking for payment. So if you don't have payment, what you think happens? That's the worst thing to be found with your works undone. You know how you feel when your boss cut you and you ain't did what you said and told your boss you was going to do? And then he catch you and ask you, I'm looking for whatever it is. And you don't have it? How would you like God to come and say, I'm looking for it and you don't have it? 
I'm looking for your works that you said you was going to do. You said you was going to call the people on the crosses. Did you do that? You said you was going to make sure ch pastor didn't have to lift a finger and do things around the church. You said you was going to do that, James. Did you do it? He can kill us for this stuff, y'all. Like, like, we, like people say in the streets, he didn't kill for less. God didn't kill for less. But we vowed these vows. We uttered these things. We said what we said we was going to do. And God said, I'm surely going to look for payment. He said, I, I, I go, no, I'm not letting, I ain't letting you slide. I'm looking for payment because you told me you was going to do it. But thank God for mercy. He gave us a chance to do it. He gave us a chance to get this thing right. Yeah, I know it was idle words, but I'm giving you a chance to make it solid. I'm giving you a chance to make, it, to, to make good on your vow you told me. Because just maybe you didn't know what you were saying. You got overhyped that day. Ooh, hallelujah. Verse 22, but if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. In other words, if you don't go run in your mouth, ain't going to be no sin to you. Why? You didn't vow to vow. I ain't going to hold you accountable for something you didn't vow. Yeah, you may have thought about it, but you was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me, uh, let me rethink this. Ooh, Hallelujah. No takey backs once you <laughs> run your mouth. <laughs> no takey backs. Y'all remember the, the kid when somebody gave you something? No take backs. When you was little, you little kid, no takey backs. Come on now, y'all, come on. See, now that's when you need to put a bit in your mouth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I ain't going to start with Beverly and Aaron today. Verse 22 again, but if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. 23, that which is gone out of thy lips. Come on, read. Verse 23 again. That which is gone, thou shalt keep and what? And perform. Wait, well, hold up. Whatever that you didn't blurt it out, whatever that you didn't been rash and hasty with, with your mouth, with our mouth, he said, you're going to keep it. Not only are you going to keep that vow, you're going to work it. So he's saying, I'm not going to give you a chance to be idle. We can't be idle with our vows. We can't be slack concerning our vows. We can't be slack concerning coming to the church what we vowed that we was going to do and take care of. We can't be slack on taking and giving our money, our $1,200 for pastor and first lady, that's a blessing under them. Why are we slack for the stuff we said we was going to do? But we say we love God. We say we love them. We say we love our church, but then turn around and be slack on the stuff we very say we love. But are you slack concerning your own self? Are you slack feeding yourself? Are you slack on taking care of yourself, washing yourself? Doing stuff for yourself? Are you slack when it comes to that? You're not even slack in making sure you come over here and say, Lord, forgive me because you don't want to die at that moment because you know he got every right to kill you. Why? Because we love ourselves. But the Lord said, if you love me, you'll keep my... So a vow ain't a commandment that you made? Verse 23, again, that which is gone out of thy mouth, that's it gone out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform. Even a what? Uh-oh. According as thou hast vowed unto the Lord, thy God, which has, thou hast promised with thy mouth. Free will offering. What you said you was going to do. It could be your time. It could be your prayer hour. It could be an extra fast day. It could be that $1,200 for pastor. Free will offering. You vowed that you was going to do. 
He said, you're going to keep it and you're going to perform it because I require that out of you. He required, God, we didn't said it and God said, I'm going to honor it. That's, how, that's, that's point blank. We are utter it, God say, I honor it. Simple. But we don't, we don't go, we don't uphold the end of the contract that we didn't drew up. We drew up that contract. We drew up that vow. Why we can't honor what we said? We put the stipulations there. A lot of us, we put a whole lot of stipulations and God honored it. Then he said, I'm looking for payment. I'm going to require it out of you. But you said it. You wrote it up. Why you can't keep, why we can't keep what we wrote up? If that ain't lazy, I don't know what is. We got to, Lord, help me to stop being lazy. Because a lot of stuff, I see why, I'm starting to see why pastors harp and hop on laziness. Because laziness is really, really deep. It goes deep. Because a lot of stuff we don't do is because of laziness. It ain't the fact that we can't do it. Remember, the word idle means you shunning the duties or the work or the labor to perform it. That don't mean you can't. Especially if we got Jesus on the inside, I can do everything. I can do everything God put in front of me or I said uh, he can do because I can just, Lord, I need help. You think he ain't going to, he said I'm going to be your ever-present help. You think he ain't going to be Johnny on the spot when you working for him? He going to give you the strength. He going to give you the know-how. He going to teach us everything we need to do know about our jobs you want to be a better usher just ask God you want to be a better anything for God just ask God he'll do it Lord I didn't vow this vow I don't know how to perform it I can help you out with that I'm going to teach you because if you be swift to hear I'll teach you how to be good on your vow if you come here to listen to me, if you come to be instructed by me, I'll teach you how to make good on your vow. But all we got to do is listen. All we got to do is hear, but we don't want to be swift to hear, and then we don't want to shut up. Ooh, hallelujah. Let's go back. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 20. God is good. He good all the time. That was a good song. He a good, he's good all the time. He's good because I love it. I don't like it all the time, but I love it about him correcting me. Because he don't have to correct me. But I thank God he corrects me. He don't have to say, James, you need to learn how to shut your mouth up. He don't have to tell me that. I believe he made this, he said this, and this, that, I believe it. I don't care what y'all think or believe. I believe he said it just for me. He made this month just for me. He made this month just for me. Because, boy, sometimes I have a hard time shutting up. Some of y'all know that. <laughs> y'all all didn't have to say amen. Aaron didn't say amen, but he kind of grinned and... <laughs> Y'all all didn't have to say amen. <laughs> He's like, everybody, amen. <laughs> but I thank God for the correction. We all should thank God for the correction. But take the correction and let's do something about it. Let's make good on our vows. We make good on our vows. We gonna, God going to make sure we shine, y'all. We can turn this world upside down. We can get people and sinners in this church, but we got to make good on our vows. And a lot of it is, we didn't say we're going to do with whatever you tell me to do, Lord. We said that. Lord, make me do right. But are you letting them make you do right? Or did you just say it because pastor said there and say, say it, and we said it? You didn't mean it? 
But you, you forget to realize you uttered it before God. <laughs> you uttered it before God. We sing these songs and we utter a whole lot of stuff before God. But do you mean it? I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. We sing these songs, but do you mean it? I'm walking with the Lord. I'm on the battlefield. I'm all in. Do you mean it? God is good. He's good all the time. Do you mean it? We say a lot of stuff because our word, our mouth is always wide open. And God is sitting back. God is sitting back and saying, y'all don't know y'all before the king? Y'all don't know who I am? He the only person that can say that. And we say that too loud. You don't got that right to say that phrase. You know who I am? We don't got that right. Only God got that right. And God's sitting back and saying, do you know who I am? And you just uttered this before me and you slack at making good at your vow? You must, you must don't know who you fooling with. But God is merciful. And he's gracious. But don't, 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 don't count that as weakness. He said, don't he said something about, you know, I'm not slack concerning my promises, as some men count slackness. We slack on our vows and our promises. But God said, I'm not slack. He said, I do what I say I'm gonna do. If I said it, you can bank on it. The only reason he is slow about doing certain things because he's given us a chance because he said, I don't want to see anybody perish. It's not my will. It's not my will to see nobody perish. I'm giving you a chance. Why? Because I'm digging around your tree a little bit longer. Because Jesus said, Lord, let me dig around this tree a little bit longer. Lord, let me dig around James a little bit longer so I can make sure he had a strength and know what he did to make good on his vow. But when is God going to get tired of digging around your tree? When is he going to get tired? He's not slack concerning his promises. If he say the wages of sin is death, it's death. He said when sin is committed, then death. But we play around with God too much because we really don't realize who we talking to. Because we busy, we so busy talking and not listening and not getting instruction and not hearing and not learning. We should come here to learn about who this man is. And we'll know, well, Lord, well, you nobody to fool with. Let's read through the Old Testament. He's nobody to fool with. And he gave us glimpses in the New Testament, Ananias and Sapphira, because they ran their mouth to the Holy Ghost. They didn't have to run, because they, when you got your mouth open wide, well, ain't nothing coming out but evil. They decided to lie to the wrong person. And God said, why would you lie to me? And so it's dangerous to sit there and run your mouth before God and don't think it's repercussions for that. He walked up on them and said, I want payment for that right now. Right now, I want payment. Drop dead. I'm going to give the wife a little bit of more leeway. Oh, okay, you want to do the same thing. So the people that came to get your, your, your husband is at the door waiting to get you. God ain't nobody to fool with. So when we utter something to his ears, we better know, Lord, I got I to gotta perform this. 
You can't just be hearers only. Do it. You got the power. You got the power to perform your duties. You got the power to do what you said you're going to do. You got the power. You got Jesus Christ Almighty. God did all what he said he was going to do. Jesus did everything he said he was going to do. And he and we got him on the inside. So what's our problem? What's our problem? Ooh, hallelujah. Did I finish read? Did I read in Proverbs? No, nope. Proverbs 20. No, I didn't because I'm not even on there. Verse 25. Amen? Amen. It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy and after vows to make inquiry. What he's saying there, when he said devour, let me, let me read what I wrote down. To blurt out, to speak rashly, to talk wildly. In other words, he running his mouth, making a vow, and then after he didn't made that vow, he trying to reconsider it. Why are you reconsidering what you didn't said to God? Because we didn't looked. Case in point, when a young man came to Jesus and asked him about eternal life, and Jesus said, "You got to do this, that, and other." He said, "I've been doing that since my youth up." So he said, "Well, okay, since you're so good and bad, why don't you go sell everything you got?" He didn't count the cost. Then when he saw that, oh, it takes all this to get eternal life, he didn't want to do nothing with it. He didn't want to have nothing to do with it. Y'all didn't, we didn't ran our mouth to do stuff. Then we see what it requires. Now you want to renege on your vow? Too late. It's too late. I remember pastor preaching that message. Did you count the cost? Didn't count the cost. Why? You was quick to run your mouth. Let your heart get you in trouble. Didn't count the cost. But see, what we say that we want to do for God is great. It's only great when you perform it. It's nothing, it's nothing wrong with desiring to do something good for the kingdom of God. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to say it, you better be prepared to do it. And God doesn't understand not completing the task that you said when he the one that's going to give you the power to do it. So why are we slack? Why are we reneging? Why are we slowing down about doing our duties? Amen? Well, let's go back to Ecclesiastes. We stopped over here on verse 4. Let's read verse 4 again. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Verse 5, better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. It's better that you had shut your mouth, didn't say nothing, than you running your mouth, it ain't doing nothing. So he say it's better that you never said nothing at all. Because if you're not going to do it, why say it? But we are bad at that. We were always saying stuff we know we ain't going to do. Yeah, I'm going to be there. Don't show up. Pastor said we wanted everybody here. For all the services while he gone, and barely anybody showed up for prayer on Monday. But we say, we say a whole lot of stuff we ain't going to do. But God said, it's better that you ain't said nothing to me. Because you just babbling out the mouth, empty words, lazy. You're going to shun the labor it takes to do what's needed to be done to perform your duties. That you said you was going to do. Lord, forgive me 
for uttering my mouth on all the stuff I said that I haven't done yet. We got to do it. Defer, like I said, defer don't mean that you ain't going to do it. It means you slow about doing it. You holding up the process. Why you want to, why we want to be the weak link in God's kingdom? We church of apostolicity, y'all. We not the weak link. We supposed to make this link. We the ones out here fasting. We the one out here pounding the streets. Not saying that we the only ones. I'm not being stupid. But a lot of people ain't going out here pounding the streets. A lot of people ain't fasting. That's what's making us strong. Let's keep doing. Let's vow. Don't 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 renege on it. Don't slow down on it. Let's get better. Let's run better. Let's run faster. Pastor sat there said, "I'm trying to get us to the point in them forty days." People looked at him like nobody said nothing. Aaron was talking about everybody. <laughs> you going for forty days for the night? <laughs> but what's wrong with getting better? What's wrong with getting better in God? It's only going to make you better and make and solidify your seat in heaven. Don't you want your seat in heaven, heaven solidified? Pay your, pay your vows. Pay your vows. Put the bits in your mouth and pay your vows. <laughs> Verse 5 again. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer thy mouth to cause thy what? Flesh to sin. Don't write a check. Don't let your mouth write a check that your rear end can't cash. <laughs> Don't write a check. That's all God is saying. Don't you utter nothing that you know you ain't don't cause your flesh to sin. Don't let your mouth get you in trouble with me. You know how we done ran our mouth to our moms and they sit there and look at us like, all right, keep running your mouth. I'm going to bust you in your mouth in a minute. Keep running your mouth. Why, why God got to get to that point with us? Why we got to say stuff to him in his, in his ears and don't perform what we said we going to do? And then you, we got to force God's hand to punish us. Why flirt with hell like that? Hell is too final. That's scary to me. It's too final. Too final. Death, to die like a dog, is too final. To die without mercy is too final. I want to go through none of that. I'm not going to go through none of that. So, Lord, remind me of my vows. Because a lot of stuff we didn't forgot. Remind me what I didn't ran my mouth so I can make sure I can perform it. Verse 6 again. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say, uh-oh, neither say thou before the what? That it was an error. Neither say, don't say that in front of the pastor that you done made a mistake. Don't say that. Angel means messenger. The angel is, to us, is our pastor. Don't say I made a mistake. I really didn't know what I was talking about. Don't say that. I was just running my mouth. Don't you say that. Why, why slow down or renege on what we said? Why we just can't say, Lord, let's do this? Why we always got to quit? Why we always got to stop, slow down? Why we just can't just say, no, I'm going to get this done? Why we, go, why we don't always take that approach? We take the other approach. Why don't we just say, you know what? You're right. Let's get this done. Let's step up and get this stuff done. But we'll say it, show up one day, then where you at the next two, three months. And then pastor got to come up here and wring our necks all over again. Well, it ain't really pastor, it's God wringing our necks saying, you vowed me a vow, and instead of me killing you, let me, let me show you where you messed up. The mirror's up. Let me show you you. But then we'll go out and forget. 
what God has said to us. Because we idle. Ooh, hallelujah. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore, wherefore should God be angry at thy voice? Anything you do, he said, I'm going to be angry at your voice. So if you slack about paying your vows, God said, every time you pray to me, I'm going to get mad. Every time you say worship to me, I'm going to get mad. Every time you say thank you, I'm going to get mad. And then he said, not only am I going to get mad, I'm going to destroy everything you try to do. Everything you go to do. And then you go to wondering, why stuff ain't working in my life? Might as well check to see if you honoring your vows. Why is all this stuff getting messed up in my life? Did, uh, uh, did you slack on your vows? Check your life. Because everything is supposed to happen in my life that's happening. Testing trials, broke, got a job I really don't like, God put me there. So, hey, hallelujah anyhow. <laughs> like me, she always telling me every day, I don't want to hear no more about your old job. You're not there anymore. <laughs> I was like, Misha, I wasn't even going to say that. <laughs> so what? I'm just saying. Because wherever you at, God put you there. Now, honor what you said you're going to do. You said you was going to serve him till the day you die. Serve him till the day you die. Because I don't, I don't want God to be angry at my voice. I want him to hear me. I don't want when he hear me, he gets mad. And then want to destroy everything around me. Don't suffer like that. Suffer. He said it's a right way to suffer and it's a wrong way to suffer. That makes sense. Suffer because God is making you to a beautiful angel for him. But don't suffer because you ain't paid your vows. Ooh, hallelujah. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the works of thy hands? Let's go to, uh, back to uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter twelve, back to thirty five. Hey, man. A good man, out of a good treasure of the heart, bringing forth good things. Let's be good men. Let's be good men. Let everything we say come out with grace, seasoned with salt. Let's not be rash and hasty with our mouth no more when we come before God. Let's come in here with the right attitude. The only way you come in here with the right attitude, you already praising them before you get to the doors. You learn, you come here swift to hear and listen to God every time we come through the doors. Lord, what is it you want me to learn today? And God will bless us, y'all. God will make sure we honor our, our, our vows, everything, and we won't just start running our mouth. And when we say it, we'll mean it, and we'll, do, we'll perform what we said. But we say all these vows, about 17 of them before God, and you ain't did half of one of them. We got to get better. And we gonna get better. We gonna, we church of apostolicity, we gonna get better. We gonna make good and pay our $1,200. Amen. Me included, all of us. We gonna do what we supposed to do. Because why? Because we got a good treasure. We gonna have a good treasure. Out of the heart, bringing forth good things. And the evil man, out of the evil treasures, bringing forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. If you want to be justified, justified by your words, perform your vows. If you want to be condemned by your words, don't do it. Perform your vows. 
That's the only way we're going to be justified. Amen? Amen. 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 Pastor will be back on Sunday. Amen. Uh, shut your mouth and pay your vows. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Pastor will be back on Sunday. Amen. I don't think nobody more happier than me. Amen. <laughs> no, I didn't have fun. Amen. I, I I didn't have fun. I just thank God he didn't chose me. Amen. God chose us. So I'm just happy God, you know, he, he picked old no good bobblehead James to do something for him. Amen. Amen. Remember, this Sunday is Visitor Appreciation Sunday. Amen. Amen. And we got the church picnic coming up, not this weekend. But next weekend, amen. So we will have a sign-in sheet for you guys to fill out so y'all can bring some food, not just water and fruit. Amen? Amen. And um, not just water, because people like to, I bring water, be 17 people bringing water. Amen. You know, pastor going to modify that list. Amen. The napkins <laughs> and two sp- napkins and two spoons, huh? Mass choir rehearsal tomorrow. Mass that means kids and adults and you seniors. Amen. You heard that, Mama Johnson? Yeah, I, 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 I. <laughs> that. <laughs> Amen. Hey, and one more last announcement. Singles meeting. If you single, you come to this meeting, Champeasy. You singles meeting. We'll, they, gonna, they will be having a singles meeting on Saturday, August 17th at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. This Saturday. Singles. You married, Tony. Unless you talking about being single again. You married. Tim ain't going to let you be single, though. <laughs> so, single will be having a meeting at Saturday, this Saturday at 9 a.m. Amen? Amen. Where are we now? All right, everybody. Everybody, please stand. Everybody had a chance to put in their offering. That was some good edifying word, wasn't it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for your word, Lord Jesus, that's teaching us, Lord Jesus, not to just speak out of our side of our neck lord jesus hallelujah we thank you lord jesus for digging around us lord jesus and for and please forgive us lord jesus please forgive us for every idle word lord jesus every vow lord jesus that we've been slow in paying lord jesus we just thank you right now for the strength lord jesus we didn't know what the cost was lord jesus but lord jesus thank you lord jesus for just illuminating that thing for us on tonight lord jesus and lord jesus thank you lord jesus for just hallelujah just stirring up the gift within us lord jesus making us want to do better lord jesus making us want to move faster lord jesus making us want to do what we have vowed to you lord jesus we vow to be doers of your word and not hearers only lord and we thank you we thank you lord jesus for the offering on tonight lord jesus 
Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that it's be used for the furtherance of this this ministry, Lord Jesus. We ask that you return the virtue back to our our minister on tonight, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He's ran for you all week, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for you, for him and for you touching him, Lord. Hallelujah. Continue to bless him and his family, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, the angel of this house, Lord Jesus, we ask that you, hallelujah, that you continue to bless them, Lord Jesus. Pastor Portis and his, and his wife, Lord Jesus, the children, Lord Jesus, thank you for their faithfulness, Lord Jesus, that we have a place to worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We ask that you continue to keep them, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Until they come back, Lord Jesus, at the appointed time, Lord Jesus, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And keep us, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.